Go High Level and SEO, how does it compare to WordPress? Is it possible to rank with a Go High Level website? Stay with me, we're going to investigate. thing I want to say is I'm not an SEO guru by any means and I think that the SEO work that I would like to do is not going to land me on the first page of Google for marketing. That is a really heavy niche. I would suggest if you are wanting to rank for keywords like those great big ones that are at a different keyword difficulty of 90%, you might want to play the long game and maybe you want to take a look at WordPress. Today, what I want to do is talk to you about high level and how you can start a simple SEO campaign, maybe within the software. How could you get started with SEO? So the first thing I want to say is that any website builder, WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, etc., they all are just a container for HTML code, right? So the container doesn't matter as much it really is about the pilot. So it's the pilot with regards to the SEO versus the plane. So what I wanna do is jump into the editor and show you some of the things that I do within high level to help me rank for myself. So the first thing that I would do if I was you is Google yourself. How are you showing up? You want to rank for you, your name, your program names, and some of your social media. It's great if you can cover the first page of Google with just your name, if somebody types in your name. So go ahead and do that. And let's jump into Google here and let's take a look. So I just typed my name, Pamela Dale, Pamela Joan Dale. A lot of people know me as Pamela Joan Dale because that is my username. So we can see pretty early here Facebook, YouTube, my website's coming up. Fantastic. Okay, Instagram is coming up. I gotta change that name. Really powerful. This is my old Instagram account, it looks like. We've got Medium, we've got Hire a Marketer, Pinterest, SoundCloud, we've got Twitter. Now, this is someone else. Then we've got me again, the SaaS Suite. This is one of my programs. So, and I'm not really good at SEO, so we can start to see some of the information coming up. And then as we go, there are a lot of other Pamela Joan Dales, there's actresses, there's all sorts of things. So it's really important to understand that this is the goal. It's not to rank maybe for some of those bigger terms. Okay, let's jump into a testing account and let's take a look. First thing is let's go here on the left-hand side to sites. We've got funnels and we've got websites. One of the things that you really want to pay attention to are your domains. Are your domains your name and or are they the programs that you're selling or services that you're selling? Are they, did you buy the domain? And is that domain 7,000 characters long? You want to keep your domain for your programs and for your name itself for your website as short as possible. So if we take a look here under settings and we jump over to take a look at domains, we've got two name accounts here, right? So if I was going to come in to this funnel and add in a domain, let's choose this one first, you can see here it says SLO-5. We want to make sure that this is changed. What is this? This is my homepage. This is my website. This is whatever the funnel name is, whatever the product name is, you're gonna to want to be sure that you've made those changes and you're gonna go ahead and click save. I'm not going to make any changes because this is a, I didn't clone this. So let's jump over and take a look at this site here. One of the things that is really important is to be sure that you have added in that domain. And then let's open up a funnel page they are the same as a website page on Go High Level when you're using the funnel and website builder. If you're using WordPress, you're going to edit that over in WordPress. WordPress, the plugins allow you to do this a little bit easier. You're going to have to think things through over here, but there are a lot of possibilities. The first thing that I would do is I would come here to settings and I would click on my SEO metadata. The title, the description and the keywords are very, very important. You could add in your keywords 
more than one and just use a comma and then do the next keywords. So very powerful. You could add in as many as you like. You want to make sure that they're relevant. Make sure that you are adding in your name. Very powerful. The other thing is this social image. If I jump over to Google right now and I just type in my name again, if I click on images, if I put my name on that image, it's going to show up in Google. So I have put my name on a few things over the years. Some of these are a little bit older. And then as we get down here, these are not me. So I haven't done it obviously enough because I don't have enough coming up. I'd like to, again, cover the whole front page if I could. So that's why when you come into the system, you want to make sure that your social image has the appropriate name. So what I like to do is I will screenshot the front of the funnel, usually above the fold, and then I will name it appropriately. So if I go ahead and hit save, and I go ahead and hit preview right now, and if I just take a screenshot here, and what it'll do on my desktop is it will give me a bunch of gobbledygook. So if we just jump over to my site, my desktop here, you can say it, it screenshot and it gives me the date and time. But what I would do is I would rename this your program or your name, right? Perfect. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and upload that. So let's jump back over and take a look. So when I come back into the system, I can upload that social image here. I'm going to upload the file. And on my desktop program, here it is here. Now, if I've got a bunch of images in here like this one that says untitled design, what I can do is I can rename it here inside of the system. So I could put my name here or my program name as well. So that's another way to do it in case you need to rename it. You've got a bunch in here already and you're coming back like I did when I started looking at this SEO better was renaming a lot of things and getting a lot of things together. It does take some time. This custom meta tag, this here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in description and you're going to watch me spell again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out a one sentence of what the description of this is. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So I'm just going to put test here for now. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to update. Let me put my name in here because I didn't save it before. And then the description is fine. And then a social image did it come in let's double click on it there we go and then i'm going to go ahead and update that metadata and i'm going to save so the reason i was adding that custom meta tag was i'm going to come over here and show you let's preview it and i'm going to view page source and then i'm going to be able to see if i go command or control f and i just type in meta i can see my metadata here so here's my description right here and I told I just typed something simple right this is what Google is going to read all of these so you could write in better descriptions better uh, author etc you could I like to do that simple one you could also add in one that won't read the page but that's a little bit more advanced so that's what we're doing when we add in that metadata inside of the settings and SEO metadata that's what's happening here. So my description is coming up and I can add in bigger, better description. Okay, so that's the first thing that I do. I make sure my domain is nice and clean and then I add in my SEO metadata. I will add in this image later once I've edited the funnel. So we're ahead of ourselves there. So the next thing is, as always, any of your images, you wanna upload them with the name, right? And then we're gonna scroll down on the left-hand side and we can see alt text for SEO. So this image name is here. It does need to be renamed, right? But I also want to give a full description of what this is. So this is going to be my logo, right? Put my name on it and then put logo, right? Always, every time you add in an image, make sure that you do that. You can change all the image names inside of the media library. And then you want to make sure that you are adding in that as well. The next thing you want to pay attention to is the paragraph settings. This is a paragraph subheadline, pardon me, and then we've got a headline 
and then we've got a paragraph setting. But what you notice when I'm clicking on these is there's a little bar up here that gives you H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. The heading for the page, there can only be one H1. Make sure that you are choosing it appropriately. This one here is the H1, this here is an H2, and this here is a paragraph. You've got an H1 on the page, the rest of them, you'd want to mark them as an H2. Make sure you can change the size, you can change the color and everything, you just want to make sure that it's registering as an H2. Make sure that you keep updating your page as well. Very, very powerful. You want to go through the whole funnel and or page and make sure that you've updated all of your headings. Google reads the H1 and H2s, H3s to determine whether or not this particular piece of copy or particular piece of content is valuable. So that's how they're going to go about reading that. So if you add this in as a paragraph, say for example, all the time, I've seen people have this habit, and then what they'll do is they'll go, oh yeah, I want that one bigger, but it's still registering as a P. So we want to make sure that you flip that to an H1 and it bolded itself up and you can see that it's made a difference in the font and in the weight of that font. We'll go ahead and hit save again. So page speed matters when ranking for Google, SEO otherwise. You, it won't load your page if it's not loading fast. Some of the ways that prevent that from happening are heavy images. I recommend that any image that you upload, that you click optimize image load, and that you would also have compressed that image ahead of time. There are a number of tools out there. Tiny PNG is one that I used to use. That is a paid version. You can upload a few, and I think um, 20 images, five megs each, so you may need to resize them. The screenshot that I showed you, that one would be quite big. So I use a free tool called Photopea that will allow me to resize that image as well very quickly. This is a tool that I use. It does allow you to upload 10 megs, so it's a little bit bigger. It's a really great tool as well. And in the blog post that belongs to this, there are a couple other tools. The other thing that you want to do is check your page load speed. So this is a really great website, GT Metrics, and you can go ahead and type in your website. So I'll type in mine. And of course, I'm not optimized for SEO in any capacity. It is a work in progress. For me, it is, let's just get something up, let's get started, and we'll optimize as we go. So we have some work to do. But you can see right away that it's testing in Vancouver, Canada. It thinks that's where I'm located maybe, or that's where this site started. So it's going to go ahead and scan that and then bring us back some results. So we can see that I got a C <laughs> at performance of 84 structure. So we've got some work to do for sure. It looks like it took a long time to, um, yeah not even sure what some of this means so you may need to reach out to somebody but there are a few suggestions around images which i kind of was not as i'm not surprised by so when it comes to seo there are a couple of tools that i use there are a million out there and i again am just getting started in the seo game this is a part one when i get better at it i'll certainly share my expertise as i go the first one here is let's take a look at keyword finder or man goals i love to rank for go high level that is what i am working towards being really great with ranking so i do have an account and once i log in i will be able to see the keywords and how they rank i would suggest that you have a tool as well that you use to see what your keywords are and then when i go to write posts i make sure that i'm in some of those keywords i pick four or five a group of them and off i go the other one that i like is the seo tester online if i type in my website again it gives me a lot more data with regards to my domain authority and Oh goodness, there's so much in here I can't even begin to explain it again because I am a new person with regards to SEO, but it gives me a really great idea of where I'm at and where I need to go. 
So SEO, are you going to give it a shot on high level? I recommend that you do. Even if you're not a huge blogger, what I recommend is that you optimize what you have so that you will rank on the first page of Google for yourself. If somebody comes in and types in your name, you don't want to be confused with a stripper. You don't want to be confused with someone else that has your name. You want to be found easily and quickly. With these tips that I've outlined, you're on your way. If you'd like any help with this, you know how to reach me down below. Talk to you soon.